what's up everybody today we are taking a look at the 20 gallon tall betta koi pond paludarium you can see the fish are looking very good which is cool <laughs> and this guy is one of my favorites not your typical koi galaxy plakat but super great colors you miss a lot of that iridescence on this camera. Anyway, it's looking great, right? Plants are looking good. Everything is lush. Just did a major trim. This is actually that temple plant, very common in the aquarium trade. It's kind of taking over everything. I just started with it getting immersed from this back corner. Took an immersed clipping, so it was already acclimated and adjusted. Popped it in the lava rock and we're good to go. I mean, we got a full tree, we got flowers. All right, everything looks fantastic. Even the boost. Immersed. See that little trick? <laughs> anyway, guys, the point of this video, right? Everything looks happy. Everything looks healthy. But this is where you want to be looking at your aquarium every day so that you can find the little things. Okay. So it just shows up as a little bit of brown on these bits of salvinia back there you can't really see it well very easy to miss but as you get in there and do some work you may notice some things like these okay so i just was working in here splash a bit of water up on the glass and now you can actually see them not well but yeah they're actually crawling up right there it's funny i'll just squirt them into the water with the turkey baster and let the fish get to them um, it may not be a major issue. I have seen this once before. Um, these spider mites, common issue for people who keep a lot of house plants, uh, work in gardens, or in greenhouses. So the best bet for me today is going to be to pull out all these floating plants because that's where they seem to be accumulating the most. Now, there's a couple ways we can treat this. Number one, neem oil, but we don't want to put that in a fish tank. Number two, I've always had great success rinsing them off of plants. Um, just a couple times in a row usually has done it for me. But number three is removing the conditions that they thrive with. So, what do they like? They like heat, which we've got here unfortunately. And they like dryness, okay, which we don't have in here. I just wiped the glass. It's already misting up there with condensation. So... What I'm going to do is cover up any gaps and get it even more humid in there. Um, up top I've got two grow lights running this tank and a little blue light to kind of accent the colors on some of these guys. But we've got gaps. So I'm going to do my best to cover those up, seal in some moisture. Um, not all of it, but most of it. And I'm going to pull those floating plants out and we'll see what happens. A little bit of white on this leaf. Now I don't know if that's dryness. But these spider mites do form little webs that are hydrophobic. And that is one of your indicators, besides seeing them actually crawling around. Now what we're going to do is squirt them into the water here with a turkey baster. And watch the fun. Now I've got some dots here. I'm going to go ahead and squirt them off the glass and into the water let the fish help us out right we got to work with nature not against it common theme um, a lot of the times I've seen them in the orange flavor the orange variety but they do come in some more red with some black dots on them and there are also some white spider mites so if you see any dots like that walking around it's a good indicator if you take a magnifying glass and look at them, they do actually look like little spiders. They are in the arachnid family, um, kind of like a tick spider hybrid. Kind of gross, uh, but it's not going to hurt you. They can't jump. They can't fly. Um, so it's a little harder for them to spread than other things. But number one, I'm going to add some extra water to this aquarium, um, kind of flood it, simulate a wet season, and that will give them less surfaces like this pothos that they're all taking refuge on to hide on and that will also cut off 
um, dry sections of rock and substrate that they are taking refuge in as well. Um, along with that, I did just go through and add a layer of masking tape from there around the back, taped around this pothos because I'm a softy. Get it going. And boom. So that's going to seal in a lot of that humidity. I went ahead and hiked the lid forward so we don't have a gap there. And those things together, <laughs> you can definitely see steamy, steamy, baby. So I'm going to make them uncomfortable, try and get rid of them that way, and the fish should do the rest of the work. Keep it natural, keep it fishy, and keep on swimming.